Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Adam Sows. This is Friday Sows. So this week I didn't manage to get a lot of sewing done, but I did manage to get Luna a new Ellie and Mac hoodie made up for her, just to keep her warm in the colder weather that we're coming into now. Um, this is made from a quilted jersey. It's a bit heavier than a French terry, um, but it has a quilted design on it. Um, and it uses a ribbing on the cuffs on the waist section around here. On cue, we have a burp from Luna. And it also, it doesn't stay in the pattern too, but I also like to spread the hood around the seam a little bit further because otherwise it it eliminates some of the tightness around here and then I've just put a tiny bit of ribbon just around the neck band to create a sort of neck band just so it's more comfortable for her. So I will pop her down and that is one of the other things that I've made this week is the popcorn bags that are from Christine Sews. Um, the um, tutorial for these is on Christine Sews' um, YouTube channel, so I will pop a link up in the cards, um, whichever side it is, one of these. Um, so the these are made from 100% cotton fabric. I've, at the moment I've made four. Um, I'm on a mission to make 10 because I'm doing a Christmas market in the beginning of December, which I will have a stall at. So I'm going to be marketing these there um, as because the, the whole reusable, repurposed thing is really big at the moment. So I've made one out of a Jurassic Park uh, Natural History Museum cotton. Um, which I've just lined with the same material. Uh, I've made one from a Little Johnny space themed cotton. This one is a remnant of Dashwood Studio cotton. Um, and I believe the lining for this one is Dashwood as well. I can't remember 100%. Um, and then I've made one from the little party hat print cotton as well. Um, this one, I actually have got a little bag of popping kernels in there um, and a little instruction sheet of how to use it, uh, which I will be giving to my parents tomorrow so that they can test it out for me. So in terms of sewing that uh, this week, that is all I've managed to get through. Um, Jen... Uh, from Jen Sewing Room has put a thing together for the Friday Sewers on Facebook. So we now have a group to discuss different things. Um, and one of the things that she um, has now started doing is to put up a question that we can answer during our Friday Sews video. So this week was what is the craziest, strangest thing that we have sewn in our sewing over the last however long we've been sewing for. So I will insert some pictures of a dress that I was making. Um, it's the craziest thing I've sewn purely for the fact of what it's made from. Um, it's made from, in the UK, we have the Royal Mail instead of the US Air Mail and different things. Um, and they transport all of the parcels and letters and mail in Royal Mail sacks, which come in different various colours depending on what goes in them. Um, so there was a, the whole purpose of this dress was to be made for a particular performer. Um, but after trying to get in contact multiple times, I never was able to arrange a fitting or anything like that. So at the moment it's, probably never going to be worn by the person that it was intended for. Um, so this was probably one of the craziest things that I've made because of how hard it was to work with the materials that it's made from. Um, the 
Royal Mail sacks that we that um, the mailmen over here use are made from a woven plastic, which I'm still now finding hidden in the hatch that opens the loft where I actually made it because our loft is converted. Um, and as you can see in the picture that I shall insert now of the rear of the dress, the back of the dress actually looks like the, the sack of envelopes um, and letters is actually leaking out of the sack. So there is mail falling out of it and all of the different letters are all addressed to different made up addresses and all of those are made from white satin. Um, and there's some as well that I believe are made from brown cotton, which represent brown envelopes. Um, all of them have got handwritten labels. All of them have got um, handmade stamps on them as well. Um, and the actual front of the dress is covered in about 400 and something sequins, um, which I have got about another, probably about another 3,600 because there was about 4,000 in total, which I haven't actually got around to putting on because I haven't progressed with it any further at the moment. Um, but that probably is one of the craziest things or the strangest things that I've ever sewn, besides the Halloween outfit for this month, which is now finished, um, and I will insert some clips of that next week um, once we've done the trick or treating. Um, so one of the other things that I did actually manage to get round to, so as I say, one of the other things that I did manage to get round to doing was making another mock up of the. Um, waste bag dispensers for um dog owners which is again going to be something that go goes to the christmas market um this one is not 100 percent because i've done a i'm using buttonholes as the opening to feed the bags through um which i'm not sure if you can see there's a buttonhole in there um, but the buttonhole on this one, I didn't line it up to the right positioning on the fabric. So it should be in the centre here rather than over to the left hand side. Um, and then I, what I normally do is just put a little plastic snap on the top of them. So you can actually fit a bag, a roll of bags inside. And then you literally just feed them through the buttonhole. Like so. And then you can clip them either to your um, belt loop on your jeans or they can be clipped onto the actual um, dog lead themselves. Um, so these are something else that I have now worked out the right pattern for. Um, so I will also be moving on to making some more hair scrunchies as well um, this weekend. And I have a whole list of other items that I need to gradually work my way through. So the only other thing that's happening this week is I'm currently waiting on confirmation as to whether I can go and look at and possibly purchase a Benina 1230 um, sewing machine, which is something that I've been looking for for quite a while. Um, they don't come up for sale very often and when they do, they seem to disappear quite quickly. But it is something that I kind of want to look at maybe replacing my Benina Industrial with, um, either that or using it as a second machine alongside that um i mean the benina industrial the one that i've got i'll just spin around just slightly so you can see is a great machine the only issue i have with it is that it doesn't have a free arm um and that can become quite problematic when you're trying to do tiny little things and turn seams and stuff so like with with making the, the top seam on the bag dispensers, it's impossible to top stitch around there because of not being able to get enough manipulation on it because of how small it is. Um, I mean, that's a, not the best example because I don't think that would even fit for a free arm because of how small it is, but there's things that I could stumble across sometimes and I just think if I had a free arm machine it would be a lot easier um, and I actually got rid of all my free arm machines when I got the industrial. Um, so besides that there's not really a lot happening this week. Um, I have got a lot of things planned for next week. So the other thing as well I have done is I've drafted out the pattern shape 
of all the different panels to, cr to try and attempt to recreate the dress from the latest Cruella movie. Um, I don't, it, whether you've seen it or not, um, I will try and insert a picture of the finished dress on the film, uh, which is one of the, uh, the movie stills. Um, and this is something that I will, when I get the time, probably after I've done all my Christmas presents um, and got all of that out of the way, it's something that I want to move on to try to, um, to recreate in a slightly different way. But I just wanted to recreate the shape of that dress as opposed to the actual finish on it. Um, so that's pretty much it for this week um, from me. Um, do remember to have a look at the Friday Sews hashtag because there's a lot of other people that are included in the Friday Sews. Um, as I said, there's Jen and there's Christine, which I will link um, in the description box below. Um, and there's a lot of other ones as well. So if you if you type in the Friday Sews hashtag or click on the Friday Sews hashtag underneath this video, it will bring up a whole um search bar of all of the people that are included in friday so's um there's a lot of great people on there and i hope you all have a great weekend and i will see you next week see you later